Michael Voltaggio. Welcome to Top Recipe presented by Truvia Sweetener. This week's winning dish is Kristen's chicken breast with herbs and miso, carrot puree, olive oil dumplings, pickled peas, celery, and a garlic emulsion. Chris, announce the winner, please. The winner will be... Kristen. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> This is Kristen's recreation of season eight's chicken pot pie dish. Got Carlos chicken pot pie. Chicken <laughs> pot pie! What? I've been talking about chicken pot pie for a week! <laughs> First thing we're gonna do is get our chicken breast going. What we've got here is two six ounce or so chicken breasts that the skin has been removed from and the bones have been taken out. We've got here a quarter cup of miso, and then we've got two sprigs of tarragon, a quarter cup of chopped parsley, three sprigs of thyme, kind of pull the leaves off, and uh, half a sprig of rosemary. Everything chopped up and mixed together. We're gonna take our chopped herbs, add that to the miso, mix it together, and spread that all over the chicken before we roll it and poach it. So we're just gonna add this, take a spoon and just mix it all together. This is gonna be that marinade for the chicken. The thing about miso that's good is that it's salty, so this will kind of cure the chicken a little bit as well while it's cooking it. So we'll take our chicken breast, lay it on a piece of paper, Spread the miso herb mixture all over the chicken. And kind of do that on both sides. You don't have to be too precious with it because you're gonna roll it up and poach it. And when it's poaching, all the juice from the chicken and the miso is gonna melt together and it's gonna all cook together in the same little pouch. So you don't have to worry about spreading it too perfectly on there. So now we're gonna roll the chicken so that we can poach it. I've got some plastic wrap. I'm gonna pull it out, stack the chicken breast on top of each other. Get the rest of that miso marinade in there and we're just gonna roll it up into a tube squeezing the ends of the plastic as you're rolling it so we can create that tube shape that Kristen was going for. Once you get it to this point, you just grab the ends and twist it like this. And then I've got some string here and we're just gonna tie this into a tight tube and repeat the same thing on the other side. And again, if you didn't get it tight enough in the beginning or if it's not still tight enough now, you can grab this end and now that this is tied, just keep twisting it until you get it as tight as possible. So now you've got this perfect tube of chicken, herbs, and miso. We're gonna set this in a 140 degree Fahrenheit water bath and cook it for an hour. Next thing we're gonna do is get our two purees started. While the purees are cooking, we will build our olive oil dumpling recipe at the same time. So I've got four carrots. They've been peeled and chopped. I'm gonna put them into a pot of water and simmer them until they're soft. The next thing we're gonna do is gonna start cooking our garlic emulsion. So what I've got here is about a cup of garlic cloves that have been peeled. So we put it in this pot of water, about two cups of water to a cup of garlic. We bring this up to a boil. Once it boils, strain it off, put it back in the water, and repeat this process six times. So now I've got my garlic here that's been blanched cold to hot six times. So I'm gonna add now one cup of soy milk to the garlic that's been blanched six times cold to hot, and cook this down until the garlic gets nice and tender. So now that the garlic is nice and tender, it's been reduced down with that soy milk, we're gonna pour this into the blender and blend it into a puree. And I've got another quarter of a cup of soy milk on the side just in case I need a little bit more to get the puree going. I've also got two ounces of silken tofu. I'm gonna add that to the blender, turn the blender on, and then that quarter cup of soy milk that we, we saved from earlier, just drizzle a little bit of that in to help get the puree nice and smooth. Season it with a little bit of salt, and we'll just blend this puree until it's nice and silky, nice and smooth. We've got that nice, smooth, silky puree. Just pour that into a cup and we'll keep that off to the side until we're ready to plate. Now our carrots are nice and tender. I've drained the water off of it and put them back into the pot. What I'm gonna do now is add half a cup of carrot juice, turn the pot back on, bring the carrot juice up to temperature, so basically to a simmer, and then we're gonna blend all of that together, a little bit of olive oil and some salt, so. Okay, now that this carrot juice is simmering, we can start the puree. So we'll turn the heat off, pour all of this into the blender, Turn the blender on, start it on low speed, gradually turn it up to faster speed. I'm gonna get everything nice and blended. Once it starts blending, you can see it's a little bit grainy. We're gonna emulsify three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil into it, and that'll help get it nice and smooth. I'm gonna season this with about a teaspoon of salt. So we've got it nice and smooth. We'll pour it back in the pot and just keep it warm until we're ready to plate. Next, we're gonna build our uh, olive oil dumplings. So I've got here one cup of flour, the zest of two lemons. I'm gonna crack two eggs into the bowl. And I'm gonna start working this into like a pasta dough type consistency. So we'll add the three ounces of olive oil, 
season with salt, and then just mix this into a dough. You could do this in a mixer as well. We're not making a lot, so we don't, we don't really need to use it in this case, but just work it until everything is mixed together into a dough. You don't want to overwork it too much because if you do, it makes it difficult to pipe it into that little gnocchi shape that we're going to go for when we're putting it into the water. So, so now that our dough is formed, we're going to take this and load it into a pastry bag. And at this point, we can start piping our dumplings into the water. So I've got an offset spatula here. I'm going to go right into our pot of boiling water and just start cutting these dumplings right into the water. I dip the spatula into the water in between each time so that it doesn't stick to the dough and it makes it easier to cut them. Then we just cook them until they float to the surface of the water. Once they float, that's when we know they're ready to take out. Now that they're floating, we can start scooping them out of the water and just put them into a bowl until we're ready to put the plate together. So Kristen has a few garnishes in this recipe that she put on at the end as well. We've got some pickled peas and we've got some lightly poached celery. So I took three stalks of celery, sliced it thin, put it into a bowl, warmed two cups of chicken stock, poured it over top of the celery, and we're gonna let that sit until it comes down to room temperature. So for the peas, similar process to the celery, but what I did was I took 10 peas, sliced them thin, put them into a bowl, took a quarter of a cup of champagne vinegar, brought it to a boil with two tablespoons of agave syrup, poured it over, and then added about a quarter cup of olive oil to it. So we've got our pickled peas, our lightly poached celery, our carrot puree is ready to go, our tofu garlic puree is ready to go, our olive oil dumplings are, are here ready to go. Last thing we gotta do is glaze our chicken breast. We're gonna take a saute pan, heat it slightly, grab our chicken out of the water. I like to open it over a bowl so that when the juice comes out of it, you don't get it all over the place. So take a knife. Again, this is gonna be hot, so you gotta be careful. Just open the end of it and squeeze it out of the plastic tube. I've got here half a cup of chicken stock, one tablespoon of agave syrup, and then what Kristen did in this recipe was just glaze the chicken breast in this chicken stock agave mixture. What we mean by glaze is we're gonna put that in the pan and reduce all that liquid on the outside of the chicken so that it gets nice and shiny, nice and flavorful. The agave and the chicken stock is gonna create this sort of glaze on the outside of the chicken and then we'll be ready to plate the dish. While the chicken is glazing in the pan, you can also add those olive oil dumplings to the pan as well and let those get nice and glazed in the same liquid so we can plate all of it together. That way you can make the dumplings ahead of time and, and get them back up to temperature in that glaze of agave and chicken stock. So we're gonna let that cook down until the liquid just reduces and all the flavor gets concentrated on the outside of the dumplings and the chicken. Once everything's nice and glazed like this, we're ready to plate. So we'll carefully take the chicken out of the pan, take a couple slices off of it. Got our garlic tofu emulsion, some of our carrot puree, a few of our olive oil dumplings, we're gonna garnish with uh, some of that lightly poached celery. Got our pickled peas. We've got the same herbs that we put into that miso herb mixture on the chicken. We've got some whole leaves. Just picked a few of those, the parsley, the thyme, the tarragon. We'll just add a few of those to the plate as well. And then it's okay at the end, what I like to do is go back and grab some of that leftover juice that we reduced on the chicken and use that as a sauce to finish the plate. It's got that agave and, and chicken stock reduced. Some of the flavor of the miso seeped out of the chicken into the sauce, so there's just a lot of flavor in there. We don't want to leave that behind. And this is Kristen's winning dish, her recreation of season eight's chicken pot pie. I'm Michael Voltaggio. Thanks for watching Top Recipe, presented by Truvia Sweetener. See you next time.